This is a sign of good things. We are filling up 12 gallons of E85 at $1.69 a gallon. And we're going over to the shop and hopefully getting the Z cart fired up and get a baseline tune on it today. So very excited because that means we'll be able to ride that under boost. So very, very pumped up right now. All right, we haven't been filming because we've been super busy just trying to get this thing squared away. We got Vlad here, Vlad Belsky, and you are killing it right now. So I try. we are setting, we just put uh, eight gallons of E85 in this and he well you explain what you just did just just a quick run through we'll get in the details when it gets on the dyno of all the nitty-gritty stuff if you want but as of right now i mean you pretty much what remapped it for e85 and just to get it idling and running and all that stuff yep and i changed the sensor definition for the pmos hpx mass sensor that we're running that's right yeah i yep. forgot all about that okay so you changed the uh the airflow uh mass airflow sensor uh tables or definitions or scaling yeah, it or what do you call it sensor definition yeah, okay it's a 16 by 16 table okay and uh so you did that and then you calibrated for our almost what 980 cc injectors which are yep. huge compared to the what 220 that was in it uh 225 so the stock injectors were 225 and now we're running 980 cc injectors so for the larger injectors, we don't have to pulse the injectors for as long, but we have to pulse the injectors longer for the ethanol fuel than for the gasoline. Okay. Because you need the, the caloric value of ethanol, you need about 30% more fuel to make the same. Power. Okay. And with all that being said, we just fired it up for the first time and it runs. So we're gonna get it off the lift and just take it down the street real quick. Like yeah, a kitten, dude. Idles beautifully. So, we have our AEM wideband installed. Um, Vlad's got to be monitoring that. And I don't know, let's go take it for a rip real quick. Yeah. Okay. This is the kind of thing people see drive by on the street and they have to do a double take. They're like, what the heck was that? What did I just see? I know. Dude, it so good. We got two Z's here. I know. <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> yeah. They're both turbo sick. though. That was sick. Like I was saying, it's like a, cool, like a long little oil cooler down there. Uh huh. I wonder what that clinking is. There's something. It's probably something silly. I what hope so. Got here? That's oil from the uh, 
Valve cover. I don't have a catch can on it or anything. Uh, That's all right. We'll figure it out in the morning. Awesome, dude. All right, we're gonna call the night. We got a little shit back. Yeah. We both have shit to do, so. Yep. Thank you so much, man. This is yeah. Really, this is getting wild. Man. You got it, man. Wait some cars. That's where this is going next. Next step is one day later this week. You're coming to the shop. Yep. And we're gonna try to hop on Journey's Dyna and go that route, and then we'll be able to really see what this thing can do. Yeah. So. Then we'll be able to find out how much ignition timing we can run. Yeah. Find uh, maximum brake torque. Perfect. Perfect. All right. That'll probably be the next. Uh, we'll next see video what it puts here. down. Awesome, Vlad. Thank you so much, hey. man. You got it. Appreciate it. A lot of stuff's moving really quickly here. We have Cletus and Cars on Saturday. Today is Monday. We just got the car fired up last night on E85, plus um, with our big injectors and everything. So that's happened. Um, I do need to bring the car home in order to be able to get as much done as I need to with the baby and everything. Things have been tough to stay at the shop for a long period of time. So right now I am going to pick up the car and we are going to put a new transmission in it, a 410 welded diff, as well as a brand new clutch. So that's what I'm gonna be working on for the next two days. And then we will have it tuned by Thursday is my goal. That will give us some time to work out any bugs if there are any. And guys, we're gonna be ripping by the weekend. I'm super fired up and I'm excited to uh, <laughs> to show this to you. I hope some of you come out to Cletus and Cars uh, at Bradenton Motorsports Park on Saturday and you can say come and say hi, see the car in person and we're going to do some quarter mile rips with the thing. So that's my goal and we're making it happen, guys. We got our lightweight flywheel. I believe this is a 15 pound flywheel it was, 14 or 15. Um, we have that, we have our pressure plate and then I went with a six puck unsprung clutch. I have the same exact clutch kit in my S54 E30, except I have the sprung uh, uh, clutch disc. So I went with the unsprung just to really get a comparison. I've never ran one before. I heard it's, I'm probably gonna regret it, but we're gonna see. Uh, there's only one way to find out. I really don't think the one in my E30 is that bad. Uh, I guess it's all personal preference. So we'll see how uh, that compares. All right guys, we're about to pull the transmission. Now, if you haven't pulled a transmission like this, you should. Just because it's a rite of passage almost. Back in the day, when I was a young lad before I had lifts and things like that, this is how we did it. Transmission's not terribly heavy. They're about, I don't know, 75 pounds, I'd say. This is re realistically, I mean, I have a ton of interruptions with my daughter, but realistically, this was gonna probably be a, I don't know, five hour job total, I'd say. Realistically, from start to finish. So here's our ZF that's going in. This is the G-Trag that's going out, in, out. Much superior transmission, uh, in my opinion. Uh, much stronger, way less issues. These things, I've seen them hold over six, 700 horsepower without even touching them, so. Okay, guys, now we need to get this pilot bearing out. And I'm gonna show you guys an old school trick. If you haven't heard of it, it's actually a pretty cool way to do this. So what you do is take wet newspaper Okay, right, so you're stuffing it inside the bearing, and what this is gonna do is go behind the bearing. Okay, so just follow me here. And then what I do is take a socket extension, this is a 3 8 socket. And this is all you're gonna do. You just keep packing newspaper in here. And what it does is, it's got nowhere else to go and it will push this bearing right out. So this is where it's at, guys. 
Now I have taken about, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes. This should be the last hit. There it is, guys. Well, guys, it's the next day. We have our 410 welded diff installed. And now I was just going to connect up the transmission and I had an oversight. I didn't realize, because I've never done a G-Trag to ZF trans before, that the output flange is a different bolt pattern than the uh, Z3 drive shaft. So the Guibo, the so the Gibo there does not line up to the ZF bolt pattern. So what we had to do, we're gonna have to get a little fancy here. What we had to do was pull the flange out of the G-Treg. I had to machine down a socket to fit into our flange. And now I'm in the process of pulling the other flange, which is very difficult. This one just popped right off. And then we're going to have to take the nut, which is a 36 millimeter nut on the ZF flange. And we're gonna to have to make that fit this. So essentially we're gonna to have to turn down and machine our own nut because the splines on both transmissions are the same. So these splines are identical on the ZF and the G-Treg. However, the nut, thread is different so what i'm gonna have to do is just take the other one because it's a 36 millimeter this is a 30 and machine it down It'll, I'll, you'll see it better once it's once it's uh happening but man what a pain this was definitely an oversight i thought i didn't even think about these not fitting but they don't and we just have to make them fit another issue i had is the uh, shifter selector rod is off the G-Trag and that sits differently than the ZF. You can see the shifter sits to the side quite a bit and back. So I'm going to have to uh, shorten the selector rod and kind of rotate it. So that's something I'll do. Well, back to the transmission deal. So what I had to do is something a little interesting. This is the ZF output shaft flange. This is the G-Trag output shaft flange. You can see the difference. This is much smaller. Now, there's a couple things with that. One thing is there's different diameter threads on the output shaft. ZF has larger, G-Trag has slightly smaller. So what I had to do was take the nut from the ZF, uh, put it in the lathe, turn it down a little bit, and then I welded the nut from the G-Treg to that. So that way we can access the nut to tighten it with a socket. If we were just to try to use the larger nut, larger diameter nut, we would not be able to get a socket in here and we would not be able to tighten it up. So I did that and I also cut a couple shims different sizes in the event, because I noticed this is a little bit thicker on this flange here than this. And that way, if we bottom out the uh, threads, then we should uh, be able to shim it and the nut should tighten up against that. So we'll see how it works out, but I think it's gonna be fine. We also had to cut the shift selector rod here. It's a little bit off. And what I determined is that this rod is actually about an inch too short. So what I did is I gave myself two options here. We can either sleeve it like this and weld it, or we could sleeve it from the inside, which is probably what I'll do. And that way we have like a sleeved tube. That way we can get the shifter in the exact right position I want. And we'll just weld it up and it will be like it will never happen. So guys, this is not the, uh, not the most ideal way to do it. What you really want to do is just buy a front half drive shaft from a ZF transmission five speed car, and that would solve all these problems. However, this car is getting on the dyno tomorrow, 
it just wasn't in the cards because I didn't have access to get that. I didn't have a new Gibo to source or anything like that. So it was just one of those deals where this is just the way it had to be done and we're doing it. So, I mean, I probably could have robbed one off my E30, but then I'd disable one car to get one car working, but whatever. This is gonna work just fine and it will get the job done. All right, we got a little ESAB welder, our MIG welder here. First time I'm using the 110 hookup. Surprisingly welding extremely well. I've never really got into the 110 because it's always a joke when it comes to any serious fabrication work, but. I mean, this welder is welding at 18 amps. No problem. I'm actually very impressed. I'm sure the duty cycle's not great, but it didn't pop a breaker or anything, so. This gives me a new, uh, newfound respect for this machine. And I almost wonder if I can hook this thing up to my generator, I should give that a shot and see what it can do on the generator. Not tonight. We have a busy weekend, but. That's something I definitely want to try because that means I can bring this thing to the track and then we're unstoppable. Okay guys, quick trip to the hardware store. A little bit nervous because we have a lot of new parts on here. Forgot to tighten the center support bearing. Like a real amateur. Uh -huh. Overall, the car feels good. The car feels real good. A little wobble in the front wheel, but I think we get that squared away. All right, I need some electrical fittings and hopefully it doesn't rain on me. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I ran out of time last week to uh, do video editing, so this video is a little late. I'm working on uh, the next video, which was our dyno run as well, so expect that video probably, maybe even today or tomorrow. Um, but uh, yeah, we, uh, we throw the car in the dyno, and then we go to Cleveson Cars and run the cart down the quarter mile at Bradenton Motorsports Park. So stay tuned for that next video. Um, and thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. And anybody who came out to Cleveson Cars yesterday, you guys are all rad. Um, it was a super fun day, even though it got rained out on. But man, we had a great time. So um, 
thanks for coming guys and it was nice meeting each and every one of you who uh stopped by and say hi